Today, we're in rural Pennsylvania for another episode of Talking Watches. Our guest is a legendary race car driver who has notched victories in Formula One, NASCAR, and IndyCar, and he's also a watch collector. His name is Mario Andretti, and today we're Talking Watches. Mario Andretti, it is such an honor to be here in your home filming an episode of Talking Watches. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for being here. You are a driver who's really done it all, I think, in your career. I think everyone would agree that you are easily uh, one of, if not the best driver of the you know, last 50 years, we'll say. Very kind. Um, and you also have a pretty amazing collection of watches. But what's unusual about your collection is that you didn't really buy them. You've kind of picked them up along the way. Yes, uh, most of them, indeed, and uh, especially at the beginning of my career. There were just things that were happening, mm -hmm. obviously, in, in the right way. And so here comes a nice watch, here comes another nice watch, and I figured, I don't have to buy. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to go, but, uh, but throughout, you know, I've been very fortunate to have a long career and, you know, being in different disciplines and so on and so forth. And, you know, we had a conic manufacturer, like Hoyer involved, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, Rolex, Tissot, and, you know, all these companies that were part of uh, the sport. And uh, somehow, you know, I just happened to score, uh, you know, some of the events that yeah. they, they were part of and uh, I benefited from. And I always wore those with pride. Before you started winning watches, I understand you have this one here from your father, this wonderful pocket watch. Yes. My dad obviously uh, left this, and, uh, and I figured this is a nice keepsake. And in fact, I just cranked it up uh, the other day, and, and it works. Nice. You know, so um, it's still with me, and, and it's reminding me of my wonderful father. And, uh, and of course, there had to be a beginning. So this is my very first watch. I have a twin brother, Aldo. Mm -hmm. You know, both had the first watch. And I was very proud of this because we were still in a refugee camp back in Italy. And uh, I got this, it was about 13 years of age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this was a status symbol. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So very proud of that. And it was given to us by my uncle Priest, actually. Uh -huh. He was a wonderful man. I don't remember the occasion must have been, okay, what would you like? You know, what was the thing you would like for your, your birthday or something uh -huh. like that? Yeah. A watch. Yeah. I love the fact that you still have your first watch. Yeah, There's I, a lot of people who wish they still had their first watch, you know? Yeah, I, I'm surprised too in a sense because all the moving around and so forth that you do, I mean, coming from Italy and immigrating to the States and all that, and I was probably wearing that, yeah, of course, when I came over. Okay, now you're racing. We're in the 60s and, you're, and you're really, your career is really taking off and you're winning. We have here two amazing Oyer Atavias. They're reference 3646 with the Mark III dial. These are very similar watches, yeah. one with the minutes on the bezel, the other with the hours. In these, I understand you got for your performances uh, in qualifying at Indy. Yes, here again, you know, obviously uh, Hoyer was uh, very much involved in the sport. It's been, you know, over the years, he's been wonderful, uh, Jack Hoyer. And this, I mean, this is a beautiful watch. That watch I mean, is... uh, It's beautiful today, but at the time, this was really state of the art, mm -hmm. no question about it. And what's interesting about you is that you pretty much wore a watch all the time when you were driving, which wasn't always the case for everyone. Yeah, I, I still do, actually. Yeah. You know, yeah. I still do. I, you know, I drive a two-seater race car and so on and so forth. But I always had a watch on. I don't know why, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during the race you can say, okay, what time is it or how long is this thing yeah. going to take, you know, type of thing. But I always felt that I needed because, you know, there's a certain degree of punctuality that you For have sure. to be aware of, you know, so I had to wear a watch and I always wore, you know, something nice. Yeah. You know, I didn't wear any junk. No, no. <laughs> I mean, from the looks of what we see here, definitely not. And then just staying in the, in the theme of Hoyer for a little bit longer, we have here this beautiful 18 karat gold Guerrera, mm -hmm. uh, reference 1158. This watch has a very special connection to Ferrari specifically. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? Yes, indeed. Actually, I was driving for Ferrari in the early 70s, and my good friend and teammate, Clay Regazzoni, was wearing this watch. This watch. I said, oh, gosh, you know, I said, got to have one. <laughs> and before you know, Jack Hoyer presented it to me, you know, yeah. and uh, it was that easy, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. just for the asking. It was just so wonderful, wonderful times, and I was very proud, I tell you, this watch was in a lot of races. In fact, I was at a hotel in uh -huh. South Africa and I left it there on a dresser and I was on a grid for the South African Grand Prix. And I remember, and I told one of my 
people say, call the hotel, make sure that the watch is still there. You know, yeah. I was worried that type of thing. And it disappeared, but somehow I got it back. And then moving on from Hoyer for a second, we have this really great Porsche design uh, mm -hmm. watch that I understand. This is actually the second one of these that you've, that you've owned. There's a good story about yeah. this, <laughs> actually. I was in Brazil for the Brazilian Grand Prix. And on a Friday after practice, I'm wearing this thing and I'm out on the beach. It was at Ipanema and I went the furthest part of the beach all by myself. And all of a sudden, Ronnie Peterson, my teammate, wanted to discuss certain things, you know, about the day. He didn't have a very good time that day. And so, you know, we talked and then before you know it, he leaves and then I fell asleep. I wake up, the watch is mm -hmm. gone from my wrist. And I go back to the pool and I figure, well, Ronnie stole it. And uh, I thought everybody was going to go, oh, you know. Yeah. And nobody's reacting. I said, okay, the joke is over. Who has my watch? And no, no. So anyway, the conclusion was yeah. it was stolen. So I made a bit of a stink about it, you know, mm -hmm. in the press. And before I know, this one shows up. So That's I got the replacement. So. And then, of course, another, you know, very important watch from your career, yeah. I will say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a Tissot that you received upon winning the Formula One championship. Yes, Tissot was one of the sponsors on the Formula One car that won the world championship, and they did a limited edition of 100 of these. So there was a question, will I get number one or number two? So it was- Should have gotten number one. It was a tug, <laughs> tug of war between yeah. Colin Chapman, you know, yeah. the team owner and myself, and he won that one. <laughs> he should have obviously provided the equipment for me. And uh, so he has number one, I have number two. And here we have a really great looking Rolex Daytona. I drove Daytona a lot, you know, I won the 500, I won the sports car race, you know, mm -hmm. in, in Ferrari, the Continental, but I don't exactly remember how I got it. I didn't get it just driving a go-kart race, so I got it doing something. Doing something, yeah. yeah. This is certainly a watch that brings to mind your friend and longtime racing collaborator, the late Paul Newman. Well, indeed. Obviously, uh, just in recent times, his famous Daytona was uh, auctioned off in New York, and um, I happened to be it there. It is history now! 15,500,000! It was really a, a very interesting moment, you know, just to bring back all the memories. And as you can see, I have some photos of Paul around with other. He has another Daytona. And the one that he that was auctioned off was given to him by Joanne mm -hmm. after the movie Winning. And not only were you guys friends, you, I think, got him into racing, didn't you? Well, I don't, indirectly, I would say uh -huh. I did. I met Paul in 1967 in yeah. Bridgehampton, Long Island. I was driving a Ken M for uh -huh. Ford, and, and they put Paul Newman's name in front of the car as a sponsor. And I got to drive him around the course, the Bridgehampton course, and I think I captured his imagination. And two years later, you know, he's doing the movie Winning. And before you know it, he goes for a national SCCA license, you know, yeah. amateur license mm -hmm. to drive in SCCA races. And he became champion. He had uh, yeah. you know, several championships in SCCA. Then he became an owner in a Can-Am series. And then uh, from there, when I came out of Formula One, I felt that I want to be with a team that I could be part of some of the decisions, you for know, sure, not yeah. just a driver. And Paul was looking, you know, to, you know, to just progress into Indy cars and and I got him together with Carl Haas, mm -hmm. who's uh, the importer of Lola Cars, you know, right. very much involved. And it turned out to be a just fantastic situation where I devoted 12 seasons and I ended my career with them in 1994. And we had 18 wins, a uh, national championship, and, you know, good success together and developed a friendship that, um, you know, was uh, probably, uh, you know, one of the most precious yeah, in my life. This, this one, is a really interesting watch. Yeah, it's interesting, but um, there were 33 of these. You had to be a driver to get you this watch. You had to be a qualified for the IndyCar race to receive one of these. So for the 75th anniversary of the Indy 500, yeah. everybody that qualified yeah. for the 1991 race, you know, got one. One other watch I noticed that you have, I think this is it, is uh, here we have a Hamilton, and it was given to you by the citizens of the, the town oh, of Nazareth. Oh, yes, town of Nazareth. In 1965, yeah. obviously, uh, you know, Indianapolis always, you know, been a very important event. And uh, I was rookie of the year at that time, and uh, that was huge, obviously, for me. And the, and the town recognized that, and they gave me a watch. It was a very nice gesture, obviously. 
One other watch that caught my eye is this Tag Heuer Octavia. This is the 2003 re-edition of the uh, Joe Seifert. This is kind of a famous collectible homage to uh, an old Heuer, and uh, this was Seifert wore these over the course of his career driving. Yes, yes, he was another one. Many of these drivers just wore these timepieces very, very proudly, obviously, and sure. uh, why not? I mean, yeah. look at look how beautiful that yeah. is. And you know what? One thing that you may not know also is these two watches that we talked about earlier, these Ottavias, yeah. these are called Mario Andretti's now. You're kidding. Collectors oh. who are who are buying these oh. refer to them as Andretti's. Oh. So you are, you are now a famous name in watch collecting. At least I have two of them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I still have two of them. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And then one other watch that we absolutely have to talk about before <laughs> uh, before we wrap up would be this Tag Heuer Carrara, which you got on being inducted into the Hall of Fame in London. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about that experience, what that meant for you and your career, and about this watch? Well, it meant a great deal, obviously, to be in the first class of inductees uh, mm -hmm. the, of the Hall of Fame in Europe. And uh, this was my trophy, you know, uh -huh. so I wear that with pride, for sure. After your whole career, taking into account, you know, Formula One, IndyCar, NASCAR, how many major races did you win, approximately? Uh, there were so many. 100, 111 sanctioned, you know, yeah. I won more early on in my career on sanction, uh -huh. and I uh, don't have a full record of that, but sanction race is 111. And waves it for Mario Andretti, winner of the 1969 500 mile race. Is there one win that really stands out that you're most proud of? You know, I've been fortunate again, you know, the win races that are best known, like Indy 500, mm -hmm. Daytona 500, and all that, but. Uh, to me, the Italian Grand Prix was, yeah. uh, on a personal level, was the most satisfying because that's where, I, as a youngster, that's where I saw the very first, you know, international race at, mm -hmm. uh, in Monza in Italy. And that was when the mold was cast as far as yeah. what to pursue in my life. And uh, yeah, yeah, when I won that, um, it was uh, just uh, huge for me. So that has to be the one. So you knew as a kid before you even got to the States, this was uh, a dream of yours that you wanted to you wanted to drive and you wanted to win. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Early on, it, uh, I was just captured by, you know, this, uh, the fascination of the sport, you know, just, uh -huh. uh, just overwhelmed me very early. And uh, I lived the dream and I'm still living the dream.